Christian Carpenter here with Everything Residential. This is part two on the proper steps to building a home addition. As we left off on the last video, you saw it as framing. And here, we'll show you a quick clip of what it looked like when we left off. Now that it was framed, we went ahead and Tyvek the entire house with a house wrap. We could have used Everbell or different products, but we ended up using Tyvek because we think it's a stronger, more durable uh, house wrap, WRB. So let's go take a closer look at the stucco. So the steps for doing the stucco is we got everything plywooded, sheathed, papered in, and we got past frame inspection. Once we pass frame inspection, we can then go ahead and start putting our lath and foam on. So if you come closer and take a look here, we have one inch foam. If you can see, this is a good side angle right here. We have one inch foam on there and they have lath. And with the foam, you can see nails. So let's see if we can see some nails here. There's one nail right here. So they're attaching the foam temporarily with the nails. They're really long nails. And then they come back and staple everything once they put the lath on. So right here is just the lath. It looks like over here on this side, we have chicken wire and lath. So you can see they just kind of changed it up. You can see the chicken wire and then the lath right here. They're stapling it all in. Here's our corner profile to support the corner of the stucco right there. And then down here, they installed a weep screed. So the weep screed is when once it's all stuccoed and let's say moisture gets behind the stucco, it will come down and it will hit this L. It's weep screed kind of goes up higher. It will hit it and go out and drip out rather than going into the house. So that's the point of the uh, weep screed. Our Tyvek goes over the weep screed. So when it hits the Tyvek and it comes down, it, won't, it doesn't go back up into the house. It just comes and spits out. And that's for moisture and making sure water is getting away from our property. Here's a profile right here of the windows. They're just gonna do a basic uh, stucco right up to it. They have pop-outs over here, but the homeowner does not want pop-outs. She doesn't like the pop-outs. That's why over here, you can see they removed all that rock and they got rid of some pop-outs up above and they're just kind of doing it smooth right into it. Maybe it curves into it. Should be pretty close profile. If you come over here and look, as you can see our soffit up there is a straight angle. With the straight angle, the existing house has a curved soffit, if you can see that. So the curved soffit has like that profile of it being curved. She doesn't like that and doesn't want that. So they want to go flat. So this is going to be an interesting transition for our stucco guy. So if you come over here and look at the angle, you can see he tied it in perfectly. You might have to get a little closer to get out of the sun. You can see how he tied it in and he has that profile and then he's going to roll it into our flat right there. Under here is going to be our drywall right here. Probably a drywall with some can lights right there. And uh, yeah, this is just kind of the stucco details. We got our water system right here. It used to be actually over there. And if you remember, we ran a temporary line through this front door until we could get the door installed. Another thing to pay attention to is right here in this outlet, come close. You can see, it might be hard to see, we might have to get a box extender to pull it out farther, but we taped all around this box right here. So it's not just like a box and you could go right in the house. It's taped up and the homeowner is going to go back and foam around it to seal this up. So we're, you know, improving our air penetrations, making our house more airtight. So do a box extender and then do a gasket type of outlet cover. So that's pretty much it for the stucco. Let's go around and look at a detail for the sliding glass door. So a part of the blueprint was installing a 20 foot sliding glass door. But because of budgeting reasons and uh, the, like how long it is to get the door, I mean, the door is looking around $30,000 for the type of door they want. So they're gonna hold off. So what we're gonna do is, is this, if you come look at this detail. Right here, typically this is where your door jam would go and you nail it in right here or screw it in all along. What we decided is we're gonna roll the stucco inside right here. The drywall is gonna be on this back side right here. The stucco is gonna come up right here and then we'll do a trim board right up to it. So it protects that drywall. Uh, and instead of doing a sliding glass door, they're actually gonna do some uh, roll hurricane shades that come down. Now the cool thing is always in the future, you can put a sliding glass door in here anytime you want. You just cut the stucco out right here and you can put your sliding glass door in. So that's a really cool thing of why the big glue lamp beams up above. Lots of options to do, to do with it. If you just take a step back and look at the windows, we have windows up above. It's gonna bring a lot of light into this side right here. So let's talk about roofing real quick and drying it in. So before we put our lab on, we made sure our roof was dried on and lab meaning the whole stucco system. So we put, we had our roofers come out. We had them dry it in with the paper. 
we had them put the sticks on and all the tile up on there to weigh the roof down. So now the entire roof and the trusses have weight on it and it's it's gonna like creak and crunch for the you know weeks and then until it settles in place. Now we're not gonna do install the roof tiles yet until we put a brown coat or a scratch coat onto the house. So we're gonna put a coat of, or first couple layers of stucco onto the house and we're gonna let it sit and it'll crack a little bit. It'll crack a little bit and kind of settle some more with the weight of the stucco and the roof. It will settle some more and crack and you know get into place and it'll be like, all right, this is a good spot right here. Once that sits for a week or two, then they're gonna come back and put their finished coat of stucco on now that all the cracking's taken place. Now here's a important thing to think about. If you're having synthetic stucco, which is like pre-colored finished stucco where you don't paint the house, you could get your roof installed and then have them stucco up to it. But there's an option here. Once we put our brown coat and our scratch coat on and it's settling, you can put your roof on and you could get your tiles in place. But if you're gonna have the house painted, one thing to think about is maybe just leave the roofing system on where it's at, finish your stucco, paint your house, and then the roofers can come in and just put the roofing in place. That way the painters might not get any roo uh, paint on your roofing system or on the tiles and you could have like a couple of tiles with paint on them. So that's like, there's a couple ways to skin the cat when it comes to installing your roof and stucco and paint all at the same time. So since we have a stucco soffit and we don't have any place to put bird blocking or ventilation and the homeowners didn't want a giant vent on the gable of their house, so what we decided to do is we're gonna put a roof fence up on top. We're not gonna do a ridge vent, but we're gonna do something like, let's see if they have any here. Looks like, yeah, can you get over here? Can you zoom in? See those roof fence right there? They're like little metal plate pieces up on the roof. Can you zoom in and see that? So that's like a way of venting that roof system because it's a vaulted ceiling under there. Now if you zoom out and look at me, we're not gonna do that old school style. We're gonna do something a little bit more modern and it looks better. And we're gonna try to do most of them on the back side. There'll have to be a couple on the front side when you drive by, but most of them, we're trying to do most on the back side. That's gonna be the method of us venting the entire attic area. All right, now that we covered the roof and stucco, let's talk about the frame inspection, which got us to do this right here. So come in here into the garage. Now for us to pass frame inspection, the inspector comes out and he's looking at electrical, plumbing, and framing and blocking and like air sealing. So come here, like here's a great example. He's looking for, he's looking at the wiring, making sure the gauge or wire is correct. He's looking for staples. I can't really get too close. He's looking for staples by the boxes. He's looking at light fixtures. He's looking for plates. Now you come over here, let's look for some plates. You can see up top there, there's some plates at the plumbing at the top. He's looking for plates, uh, like plate protectors from screw when the drywall goes in. When it comes to plumbing, he's looking at strapping the pipes into place. He's, he's making sure the water's on and it's pressured so there's no leaks. For framing, we've already passed strap and shear, so now he's coming back and he's looking for blocking for drywall. He wants drywall blocking. He's looking for, let's see over here in this corner, you can see right here, we put blocking up on the top of our wall up there so drywall has something to attach to. He's looking at gable bracing. You can see the two by fours that go from the top of the plate up to the second or third truss. That's bracing the middle of the wall to keep it firm and strong. Those are some key things he's looking for part of frame inspection. And once we pass that and he inspects the whole house, then we're good to go. Now let's transition and talk about insulation because the next thing up is insulation. We don't have an insulation inspection, but we are going to insulate everything very well. And then the next inspection is gonna be drywall and lab. So let's talk about insulation. Okay, so these are considered exterior walls. This wall right here and that wall right there. Those are considered exterior walls. So the reason we put the drywall in place right now is so they're gonna do some kind of foam or spray foam insulation, whatever the homeowner wants to do. When it comes to our project, we only, we only did a couple things, foundation, framing, roofing, drywall, a couple things for the contract. She took care of electrical and she's taking care of insulation. So we put this drywall up right here so she can seal it up and make it like a nice sealed wall from the outside. Over here on this wall is also a exterior wall. So this right here, she's putting up some hardy board or cement board. So this is gonna be like a fire rated wall and it's gonna be sealed up. So the inside of the house is a sealed system. Quick side note, uh, other than insulation is, let's talk about this real quick with the electrical. Now it's really important, the uh, inspector needs to know where the countertops are going. So we need to tape off 
hey, where are the countertops are going? You know, fridge is going here, countertops go right here, because these outlets have to be a certain distance from each other. If we a certain distance from the end of the countertop, if we a certain distance wrapped around. So he needs that on the ground so he can make sure that there is enough outlets for the countertop. Now, when it comes to the plumbing, this is another quick side note, you have to fill this tank with water. So this, or this pipe. So they seal this up at the bottom right here. And then what they do is they, we fill everything up with water and we have the, it's all filled up with water at the top. And uh, then you can literally knock on the pipe and feel the water in there. I don't know if there's any in there. They probably emptied it out, but yeah, they fill this up with water so they know, hey, nothing leaks, we're good to go. Even though it's venting, you don't want uh, venting sewage gas going into, into the house or into the wall. So we're doing bad insulation throughout and then we're doing some type of foam insulation the homeowner has on the exterior walls to seal it up. But everything else is gonna get bad insulation. Up above is gonna be blown in. So when we start sheetrocking, that's when we're gonna decide, hey, let's put the uh, attic entrance right here or wherever they wanna put them. So she's still deciding where that's gonna go, but once the sheetrock's up, then it can be blown in insulation on the top. Let's go around to the uh, dining room area and talk about that insulation. So come in here and let's look at the vaulted ceiling. You can see how tall it is up there. Look how high it is, it's, it's really up there. Now for this insulation up there, they're using 14 inch bad insulation and they're just gonna stuff it up in there. And that's what's gonna, uh, insulate the vaulted ceiling portion all the way up there. So it's gonna be all uh, insulated. They were gonna do tongue and groove, but for now we're just gonna do some sheetrock and get it all sheetrocked and then from there make a move whenever they want to do that. Whether it's keep the sheetrock or you do, you know, do whatever they want. Here is the uh, fireplace. So they actually just built this and this is what's cool about doing these inspections and the, working with the city. Uh, the fireplace was never a part of the blueprint, but it's gonna be a fireplace that doesn't require electrical or gas. It's like some kind of, I don't wanna say methane, it's some kind of like portable unit where you just put it in there and it's like, it runs by itself. It doesn't require any electrical or gas from the house or the addition. So they don't have to do load calcs or anything to, you know, a part of the blueprints to add to it. But here's the uh, fireplace she built and she's very handy. This is the, uh, the wife is doing all this, all the insulating electrical and building a fireplace. So this is one of the handiest people I think we've ever met as a customer ever. But uh, they're building a fireplace here, and then over here is gonna be an exterior door. So we put the exterior door right there. That's exterior rated, this is your exterior wall. Uh, cement board's going up so they can insulate the backside. Let's talk about uh, HVAC and cooling and heating the house. So as you can see right here in this corner, we're running a mini split lines, and it goes out to the house so the unit will be out there, and then the head will be right here. So that's where the head will be right there. It'll cool this whole area down for this, uh, you know, open air type of system. Maybe they turn the heater on or turn the cooler on. Over here is gonna be, you might be able to see it, the silver duct that's running. So they tapped into the main part of the system because they had enough, uh, you know, what's the word? They had enough like flow, they had enough energy or enough sears to run off and tap into over here. The problem with this is you can encounter doing like 40 foot runs, you lose pressure because it's such a long run from like where the main like 16 inch trunk is. But they're running those over there to cool this part of the uh, living area off. This is actually considered not living area. That's why it's an exterior wall right here. But we have the mini split for this room and then we're tapping off the main house to cool that room in there. Okay, so this is pretty much for part two. Uh, part three, you're gonna see that the roof is gonna be installed completely. We'll have the stucco on. Uh, hopefully the homeowner gets the garage doors installed. We'll have drywall on. They'll probably be getting mudded and I'm uh, really gonna see it come together in part three. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or if you wanna get in contact with us, everything's down below in like the description. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. Thank you guys, have a nice day.